Hello, welcome to Pike Creek Farm. Today is my contribution for Noodle November. Lots and lots of noodle recipes. Who doesn't like noodles? This great collaboration is put on by Tony at Kettle Kitchen. And he came up with this idea months ago and told me about it. And he said he really wanted to get some recipes, some demos of noodles made from scratch. And I've done it a little. I make drop noodles in my chicken soup, which is really good. My family loves that. Nothing fancy, just mix it up and drop it. I'm good at that. But the one I decided to do that I've only done a few times, but um, I like it, is pierogi. So kind of like the Polish version of ravioli. So we're gonna make the dough homemade and it's, it's not complicated. And I'm gonna make potato and cheese pierogi and sauerkraut pierogi. But there's all kinds of pierogies. There's pierogies that have, um, it's a dry kind of cheese, kind of like dry curd cottage cheese or farmer's cheese. Or some people use cottage cheese that they drain. There is an actual Polish version of the cheese. And you know, it's probably in the stores around here because we have a large Polish um, population here on the east side of our county <laughs> but I didn't look for that I'm doing the potato and then I'm also gonna do some sauerkraut ones I have some leftover sauerkraut so I thought I'd put some of that in some pierogi dough you can make mushroom pierogi you can make sweet pierogi that have blueberries in it and they said wild blueberries are the best and I thought that sounds really good but I have no wild blueberries so what I'm gonna do is make two kinds of pierogi. Gonna have some Polish sausage with it. And there's different ways of cooking the pierogi. You can just boil them and then serve them with butter or you can pan fry them so they get a little crispy and that's what I usually do. I'm gonna serve it with um, some sour cream and some applesauce. So kind of a traditional meal in this area anyway. We have a lot of different Polish buffets and pierogies are always on it. So come along and we will attempt to make pierogies together as part of Noodle November put on by Kettle Kitchen. And make sure you comment on all the videos. I'll have the playlist below and the list of all the channels because Tony's gonna have a drawing at the end of the month and you wanna make sure you win any of the prizes because there's always some great ones. So let's get my apron on and let's get making pierogi. First step is to make some mashed potatoes. You can use leftover mashed potatoes. You can use instant. You can use the store-bought ones. But I'm just gonna make some quick. That's what grandma would have done. <laughs> now the cool thing about making these is you can actually freeze them. After you make them, you can put them on a cookie sheet and put them in the freezer to flash freeze and then put them into a freezer bag and take out as many as you want. And you just have to boil them. You put them right from frozen into boiling. So I'm gonna get the potatoes on cooking and then we're gonna start the dough. And the dough does have to rest. Okay, I'm going to make a half a recipe of that I'll be linking below from Spend With Pennies. So I have one cup of all-purpose flour. I'm adding one beaten egg, three tablespoons of vegetable oil, and one teaspoon of salt. And half a cup of water. And I will add more water if it needs it. And then we're gonna knead this until it becomes smooth. We don't wanna overwork it because then it will get tough. more flour into the bowl it wasn't 
coming together at all. This would be a fun project to do with your family um, to get them in enough for the freezer. You could have all different fillings, meat fillings, different cheese, and you can be creative. This will be a soft dough, but you want to be able to roll it out too. So. Okay, this is looking pretty smooth to me. I'm gonna just tuck it all under. I'm gonna put a little bit of oil in this bowl so that it doesn't stick. This will not be rising really. It's just gonna rest and become more pliable. So I'm gonna get a towel and cover this up and I like to dampen the towel first. I'm gonna set this at the back of the stove now. So I'm just making the mashed potatoes. And I added the seasoning. I'm gonna add some cream cheese into them. And some cream. Okay, this is looking good. I am going to shred some sharp cheese now to put in there. This would actually be a good recipe to use your leftover potatoes from Thanksgiving for. And this should be enough. And then I'm, I have some leftover sauerkraut from making Reuben's. So I'm going to turn that into sauerkraut filling. So I just have some canned sauerkraut. And I'm going to use kitchen shears to make it into smaller pieces. And then we're gonna heat it up till it's nice and soft. pretty small right now. I'm going to heat it up on the stove and let it get nice and soft. So we have all our components ready now. Just a matter of the dough sitting enough, resting enough, and then we can start the process. Okay, it's time to roll them out now. I have just a small piece of the dough. I left the rest in the bowl with a towel over so it doesn't dry out. I have some flour on the counter so that it doesn't stick. I have a little container of water to dip my fingers in and to seal in case I need that. I have a cup to cut out the shape. That should be the right size, I'm hoping. I have my fillings, I have a rolling pin, and I have a cookie sheet that I have some parchment paper on. And I'll set them there when I'm done. And I have a pot of water that I have heating on heating up on the stove. If I wanted to just freeze them and not cook them now after they're on the cookie sheet, I could put them in the freezer and when they're frozen, put them in a Ziploc bag. So let's see how I do. <laughs> I do not claim to be an expert on rolling out things, but this is very nice and soft. She says you can also like just pinch off a piece she actually has it down to the exact number. 
and she weighs them and make it into a round circle. You want it about an eighth of an inch thick, the, the pasta. So now we are going to cut one out. I don't have a biscuit cutter. And let's see if this is big enough. It might shrink back a little. So there we have it. I'm going to take about a tablespoon of the potato filling and place it in the middle and then pull up the center parts of the dough and with your finger you want to push back any potato or any filling so that it doesn't get in that center of the, where you're squeezing together. So this one's sealed pretty good. It's important to make sure that they're sealed because you don't want the filling to come out when you boil it. So I'm going to give it a little pleat. That's my oven. I have put some Polish kielbasa, smoked kielbasa in there just to cook. And there we go. There's my first one. Checking the other side to make sure it all looks sealed. So we will go on to the next one. Let's try one with uh, sauerkraut. I do like how this dough feels, even though I got there in a crazy way by not double checking the recipe when I was halving it. Get another spoon out. Let's try one with the sauerkraut. You want your sauerkraut to be in small pieces and to be not overly juicy. You want it to be, you know, like pat it dry. Pinch in the middle when you bring both sides up. And please understand, I am, this is probably not a real traditional recipe. I am sure someone has a Polish grandma who can make them a million times better than me. But I enjoy trying new things. And growing my skills. So here's one, a sauerkraut one. Okay, I'm gonna put this back into the bowl and I will roll out all the end pieces together. So I have the water boiling. I turned it down a little now so it'll be more a simmer. And I'm going to plop the pierogi in. I'm gonna do the potato ones first so I can tell them apart. And when they start to float is when they're done. And then I have some butter in a pan over here and I will put them into that. We bring you over, they're starting to float. One, and 
We're going to put the sauerkraut ones in now. To keep rolling these out and cooking them, um, I am going to get another pan out for the sauerkraut ones so they're not mixed together. I didn't think of that. <laughs> realize I made too many mashed potatoes. Oh well. They will get eaten. So after this, I probably have enough for another size like that. I didn't want to make too many of them. Up oh, in my pierogies are floating. The sauerkraut ones. That one turned out really pretty. Add them to the another pan that I have going. We like them pan fried till they're a little bit crispy. make. The young couple that sells them at our events around here, they make up all different combinations. There's meat ones, there's blue cheese, there's Reuben ones. So you can be pretty creative with them. Oh, that one turned out good. <laughs> Guess the more you practice, the better it comes. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to keep making these and boiling them and putting them in the pans and I'll bring you back for how it looks at the end. Here it is all finished. Applesauce, these are the potato ones. I got two sauerkraut ones here. My sausage and this is my pickled red cabbage. It's a ball recipe. So That one turned out nice and crisp on the outside. So, let's see. A little bit of sour cream. Mmm. It's hot. <laughs> see the has some purple cabbage on it, but there's the inside of the sauerkraut. And I have a little bit of applesauce with it. You can make these little and make them, you can air fry them or deep fry them and make them as appetizers. They're good. I'll put the link down below for the recipe that I use, and I did cut it in half. And thank you, Tony, very much for for Noodle November and for all these great ideas and recipes and watch all the videos. There's a lot of great ideas and you might discover some new channels you really like. And also comment because you want to be eligible for the drawing and win some great prizes possibly. So I'll have the playlist down below. Thank you very much for stopping in. If you like this video, if you push the like button, if you want to see more on cooking and canning and life here at Pike Creek Farm, subscribe to my channel. See you next time at Pike Creek Farm.